Another great character is Isabella I. Isabella I is an important historical figure in the conquest of liberty. Though she died roughly six years before the story of the conquest of liberty begins, she, along with Ferdinand II, drastically influenced the world's march towards liberty. And not necessarily intentionally. Customarily, women from royal and noble families had little choice in their marital arrangements. Not so with Isabella. At age six, she was promised to the younger son of King John II of Navarre, a boy named Ferdinand. Years passed, important people died, new kings reigned, and Isabella got promised to Charles of Vienna, who was then imprisoned by the king to break off the engagement. Now, when Isabella refused to marry um, Alfonso V of Portugal, a civil war broke out. To keep the peace, Isabella was then betrothed to Don Pedro Giron Acuna Pacheco, but he died on his way to marry Isabella. Next was uh, Edward IV of England, or Richard, Duke of Gloucester. Then, King Henry, Isabella's half-brother, tried to force her to marry Charles, Duke of Berry, which he thought would unite Castile and France. Isabella said no, and so she snuck out of the castle, eloped with Ferdinand. Now, why does it matter? It illustrates Isabella's strong will and independence. Too bad she didn't extend that same independence to the Jews and the Muslims in the Iberian Peninsula. Isabella was an excellent administrator. Her lists of accomplishments are long. For her part in the conquest of liberty, it was her and King Ferdinand who launched the exploration of the New World by supporting Christopher Columbus. She and Ferdinand united Castile, Leon, Aragon, and conquered Granada, expelling or converting the Muslims to Christianity. Her personal confessor for many years was our very own Cardinal Hernando Talavera, who, because of his excellent service and temperament, was named by Isabella the new Archbishop of Granada. Now, Isabella held Talavera in the highest regard. Some historians believe it was Talavera who facilitated and recommended the Columbus venture. It was after her death that Cardinal Cisneros felt safe persecuting Archbishop Talavera. Isabella I of Castile and Ferdinand II of Aragon are known for being the first monarchs to be referred to as the Queen and King of Spain. For good or bad, however you choose to read history, the Catholic monarchs, as they were called, stirred up the world. Isabella's marriage to Ferdinand in 1469 created the basis of the unification of Spain. The basis, I underscore, not the official unification yet. Her reforms and those she made with her husband had an influence that extended around the world. Now, let me sum up with a short summary. I know it's too much. Sum up. Their actions included completion of the Reconquista, the Alhambra decree which ordered mass expulsion of the Jews from Spain, initiating the Spanish Inquisition, financing Christopher Columbus' 1492 voyage to the New World, and establishing the, uh, the Spanish Empire, making Spain a major power in Europe and the world and ultimately ushering the Spanish Golden Age. Together with her husband, Isabella was granted the title of Catholic Monarch by the Spanish Pope Alexander VI and was recognized as a servant of God by the Catholic Church. Now, try to say that in a few words.